Hey, hey, and welcome to our sew along today. We are going to be sewing Sophia. Which is this gorgeous tote. Then this one we have this lovely recess zipper with the brim. <laughs> Which I'm hoping you'll find super easy to do. This one has either O rings, which are one and a half inches, or I'm going to be using these fancy D ring rectangular rings today, which look like double D's. These are one inches wide. So we'll jump straight into it. Now the pattern you can either have this center seam which I like on like an all plain outer such as this one because it just adds a little bit more detail or if you have a busy fabric or a very thick fabric where you don't want the center seam go for an all plain outer they both use the same pattern piece. So if you wanted the plain outer, you would fold back this dashed line and cut two on the fold. Easy peasy. If you wanted the centre seam, you would cut two as a whole. Flip the pattern piece over and cut another two outer pieces. Now when it comes to joining them together, you would take two opposites, right side together, and then sew them up using regular seam allowance on this side, not the side with the cutout. So this side here where it slopes down. Then open them up, press open the seam allowance, top stitch, both sides and you'll end up with this lovely detail here but I am going to be doing the plain outer because I've got this lovely busy fabric by I think it's by Ruby Star that I think doesn't need the center seam and as you can see I've gone ahead I've done one half already so we will do the other side of the bag today in the video. I'm just grabbing the bits and bobs. So no matter which way you're doing it, whether you've got the seam or flat, you need to attach it to some kind of structure. So I'm using foam. You could use fusible fleece if you want, which will give you a nice softer bag. Gosh, I hear one of mine. With the foam, you would sew them together using about a quarter inch seam allowance, long stitches. But make sure you trim the foam away from all of the corners just to reduce the bulk when constructing. So obviously I've done this before sewing the outer to the foam. And then using a pair of scissors, I've just trimmed away the excess from the seam allowance. nice and easy does it strut connectors you have four obviously I've done two so I've got two left what I've done is I've if you've got cotton or linen you could fold them in half long ways to find the long center line I've got faux leather so I had to measure and draw my long center line and I've brought the long raw edges in to meet the centre line. Again, if you've got cotton or linen, you can just press it, leave it as that. If you've got faux leather or cork or something heavy, you can use double sided tape. And then just to hold the fold, I top stitch down the long sides using a quarter inch seam allowance. Because you can guarantee once you've stuck one, 
by the time you've gone to sew the second one on, the one's come unstuck. Always happens. So we're just going to hold the folds using a quarter inch seam allowance. So that's what I've done here. Once you've done all four, and they look like this, they're one inch wide, you can try and attach them. So I know it feels like we're skipping ahead, but these are nice, just simple little tasks. But if you do need any extra help, just give me a yell. So I'm on the wrong side now. So I'm on the side that has the raw edges. If you're using non-directional fabric, like the faux leather, it doesn't matter which end you mark in with. If you're using a print that's got a design, a picture or anything, mark from the top. So I'm marking four inches down from the top. And then when you slide on your D-ring or O-ring, fold it over to meet that line. You've got then your two inch fold like so hands are not working I'm so cold today like so Now because I've got this faux leather, I can't pin to hold the folds and the clips get in the way. So I'm just adding a little touch of double sided tape. I was using like the other one I used the canvas I just pinned it made it nice and easy then grab one of your outer body pieces on this side we're going to split these so that the raw edges are hidden and if you have a quilting ruler perfect make this so much easier if you haven't you can measure in and mark draw a line use washi tape whatever you need to do but i'm going to set my ruler so it's four inches i've got my edges met at the bottom and Again, as this is faux leather, I'm only taping where I'm not sewing. I don't like sewing over tape. If you've got a quilting ruler, you can use this to help your strap connector be beautifully straight, like so. I'll do the other one whilst we're here. Ooh, you can see my light. No fancy lighting here. But 
again if you have cotton even if the body is so leather or cork if your connectors are linen canvas something you that you can pin i still pin mine to the faux leather because you're not going to be able to see the pin marks after but if it's a faux leather or cork on the connectors that you can't pin i definitely recommend taping I've got these set where I want them. I'm going to measure down one inches from the fold. And I know I could get closer than that if I wanted, but especially if you're using an O-ring, it sits a little different in the connector so you need to give it a bit more wiggle room and I think one inch is absolutely fine I am marking it so that they all even the annoying thing about the over friction pens is certain faux leathers I don't know where it goes it just disappears It dries, that's what it does. But I like giving myself a little line to sew to. And then they're nice and even. And then we need to attach these then to each other. So let's start at the bottom, top stitching. All the way up across your marker wherever that may be back down again same as this one up across back down again go and then if you've used a razorball marker you can get rid of that for now or throw your washi tape away so you might have this double line effect or you might just have the the box either is absolutely fine if you wish to add some kind of support in the way of rivets as i have done here what did i measure there Do look what i've done one and a quarter go with what looks good on um, some of the bags i've because I've done all plain faux leather, I've actually added multiple rivets at one inch, one inch of the prop. This one I've done a one and a quarter. Hang on, I can't see what I'm doing. So I've just gone a quarter inch below my stitch line. not interfering but giving support now I've got a hole punch that requires a hammer so I will just go off to my table and hammer these holes in and I'll be back 
So I've used my hole punch, punch the holes, and I've got my rivets here. If your strap connectors are really thin, or you might use fusible fleece, you might need to support the back of the rivet. So find something, anything, a bit of stabiliser, a bit of faux leather, anything just to give it a bit of support. If you're not using rivets, you could even just sew a line along the top, uh, about a quarter inch on the top of your box or even below, just to add a second row of stitches. Just small rivets here. And I've got a I've got a press. <laughs> Or you might have one of these where you do a little fancy hammering. I should just press mine quickly. Right, so I have pressed both of these now. As I said, you might have lots. You might have none, you might have a row of stitches. Whatever we are, we're gonna move on to bag feet. Again, this is optional. If you don't want feet on your bag, don't worry, it's all good. Now I have these ones, one, two, three, four, that look like split pins. Three, four. You might have the rivet press ones, or you may even be using the ones that are like Chicago screws that you screw in. Whichever you're using, you still need to make measurements. Now be careful if you have drastically altered the size of the bag. You may even want to complete the outer before you decide where to put the feet in. Because if you've made this bag much smaller and you're going to do this measurement, you'll end up with the feet in the wrong place. So bear that in mind. If you have, you know, changed it drastically. Otherwise, don't panic. I'm just measuring two inches up from the bottom. And this is a guide for your bag feet because you might not have the same ones as me so this is just a guide to help make sure that they're all in the same place something like that Oops. 
throwing them about a bit. Oh, that's a horrible squeaking noise. Gives me the GBs. Like that, so I put them in from the right side. On the wrong side, again, if you, if you feel this is too thin, you might want to add just a little scrap of something support these are Emmeline branded feet here and they come as a split pin and to protect my bag lining from these pointy bits Ooh. I'm using duct tape if you want your bag to be washable you might not want to use duct tape you could um, use a bit of interfacing like a big piece just be careful with your iron Like so, that's that one done. I should just do the other one quickly. So again, I measured two inches up and then I've used that mark line as a guide for where I'm putting the holes for my washers, for my prongs. And yes, this is a bit for a bit because I've used multiple layers of double sided tape. So the canvas connectors were a lot easier to do. And I can't hack at this with scissors on video because I would probably get banned. Ooh. Oh my God. I think that's right up there with the polystyrene noise. <laughs> as long as they're in there tightly, they won't move around and you won't get that noise. So as my bag is faux leather, it is wipe clean only, so I'm happy about using duct tape. The outer bit's done, we just need to add our strap, straps, multiple, next. So I have my straps and a cheeky biscuit. I've already made mine but to make yours it is super easy to do I have one off another bag that I'm going to be doing I'm 
one you do measure in one inches from the short end do this on both both short ends of both strap pieces now depending on your fabric you could either fold and press with heat or you could use double sided tape I like to avoid too much tape so I actually stitch mine in place at a quarter inch which is why I have two rows of stitching on mine I think it looks pretty cool if my camera wants to zoom there we go hello and this just makes the end really neat so we don't have that raw edge obviously some fabrics like cork you can get away with a raw edge or if you're using the strap ends by all means leave them raw don't worry about this fold once we've done that we need to do a lovely four fold so we fold in half and press or measure and mark to find the long center line so you would measure it and you would have this lovely long line down here Feeling a bit cluttered. Yeah. Once you've got your centre line, whether drawn or folded, you bring your raw edges in to meet this centre line and either press or use double sided tape or glue. Or clips to hold it in place and once it's in place you fold it again to make this lovely one inch wide strap it's so nice you do it twice you have two straps pick one of the flat ends Sometimes your start and finish stitches look nicer on one side than the other. What I'm going to do is, like we did with the connectors, I'm measuring up four inches. grab your bag or bag out of one side of we're going from the outside in towards the bag and bring it up to meet that marker and I'm just going to hold that with a clip and the same again outside to inside so that when you're holding your bag the folds are hidden on the back you can sew these on with a box which is why we're putting them on now because it's so much easier to sew them when you've got this flat panel that you can fold out the way rather than a big finished bag trust me on that one or you can measure and mark the same as we did with the connectors. That's what I did. One and a half down. I'm going to do. Oh, sorry, one and a quarter down. I'm going to do one and a quarter up, so that they're even. I'm going for a larger rivet. I think this one is a medium. I can just see a little 
maybe a bit of the post. You don't want too much post because you'll end up with a, like a weird bit on there. There's too much. Like that. So again, you could sew a box, add more rivets, as many as you want. You might need a bigger fold to do that. But just make sure before you press anything that there are no twists. The last thing you want is to put on your strap and then realise that there is a twist. Lovely sound. You'll see where I measured them, they are the same distance, top and bottom. I'm going to do this on the opposite side of the bag, so the other outer body panel, the other strap. I'm going to press my rivets with my rivet puncher thingy, whichever one you have. And then that is the outer faffing ready for construction. So do what you need to do and we'll come back and we'll put them together. Right, so we have attached our strap. We can put this bag together or outer. So I'm going to lay my pieces right side together and I've got my straps up out of the way. Now on the base, I'm going to do the bottom first. Try your best to match up the bottoms of the connectors. And if you have a centre, a seam as well, try and match that up best you can. And then we are going to match up the sides. Work a few clips in here. What I'm going to do is sew them together. I'm going to go down the sides and across the bottom. I'm then going to add some support stitches where these connectors are. So about an eighth behind the first row or the main row of stitching, I'm just going to add some support stitches. I will show you what I mean when I've done it. Regular seam allowance, just pinch this as you sew it because with the feet it tries to misbehave.
there you go so I've sewn down the sides across the bottom and then I put in a row of support stitches which is hard to show because obviously I've got that row of stitching from where I basted the foam so they are there I've only gone sort of between there and there I still want to be able to open the seams on the sides I am going to trim my seam allowance now while we're here you can wait till it's all done that's absolutely fine so I've trimmed to about a quarter inch but I've left a bit of the top which I can open because I find it easier to open the seam allowance when you've just when you've got a bit more to do it with and the same as the bottom when you trim the base just remember not to cut your support stitches I'm using the worst scissors because I'm not sure where my nice ones are because my sewing room is a mess And then we can make the corners so I'm just going to pull these parts the outer body apart and then naturally these want to come and join each other so open up the seam allowances again easy to do if you've left a little bit behind and bring them together Just matching up the seams. I'm going to do the other one while I'm here. So bring these outer panels apart and bring the seams together. I'm going to sew two rows of stitching on these so first one regular seam allowance and I'm going to sew a support row about eight ish behind the first don't want it too close but enough just to support the first that is what I do when I've generally got foam or thicker fabrics it's just give it a little bit of support So I'm just going to trim the seam out a little, I'm not taking a lot off. And my rule of thumb generally is, if you look inside, maybe hold that up to a light. If you can see daylight through the bottom of your bag, it needs support. So even at this stage, if you get to here and you think, oh, it needs support, you can still squish it, add a bit more, add some more stitching where needed. Have a look in. Does it look okay? Looking pretty darn good. So we'll put this aside and move on to the lining. 